Welcome to the newest installment of the Untitled Film Nerd Project. My name is Philip. And joining me as always is TJ. Hey. Hello. Hey. Start finding you like Ike Turner. (laughs) Five. That'd be five. We are done with season two of Stranger Things, and this is our overall synopsis reaction thing that I have not named yet, so that's what it's called for right now. We're basically basically going to discuss season two, which we literally just finished and did our video for uh, episode nine, chapter nine. So let's get into it. I'm ready. You can go in. I, I fucking dominated talking because I don't mean my notes. So please, I want to hear you. You speak on season two. Again, like this. Bravo. Yeah. To to everyone involved. Mm-hmm. Definitely. The first season was so impactful. And it was a big question on how to you how do you continue and how do you go bigger? Yeah, yeah. And they completely succeeded. Because at the end of season one, we're left with those questions. You know, L is obviously alive, mm-hmm. but where does that go? And we saw that Will was having flashes to the upside down place. Where does that go? And puking up slugs. Yeah, which we didn't. Which I mean, I like what that did now Mm -hmm. at the time it just seemed like a random like he was getting like the infection out of him Mm -hmm. but now we realize it was like it used him to get through in a way which is very smart i mean i still will always say that this entire season is very much an elfin lead ripoff Mm -hmm. but i I don't hate it you know it's Mm -hmm. still so well written and so well done it's better than elfin lead in my opinion which is a horrible anime Mm-hmm. Um, so a little side rant Elfin Lead was so bad to me that I have not watched an anime since Oh, and that's, it's been at least a year mm-hmm. so it was it, it was bleh. Okay, that'll be another video <laughs> we're talking about Stranger Things not Elfin Lead one of the things that I liked mm-hmm. was just like the first one everything kicked off with such a small beginning and by that I mean like Hopper getting the call that some pumpkin patch. Oh is yeah, rotted. yeah. With that air, with that you know, bit of mystery, like what's going on yes. now? Because yeah, in, in the episode, in the uh, reviews of the episodes, you know, we were both theorizing mm-hmm. what we thought it could be. You know, because initially I thought maybe it was the uh, upside down place, like bleeding through, not in the way it did. I didn't, I didn't have that right, but I thought maybe like you know the flashes that Will was seeing were the circumference of the rot that was going on. Yes. It wasn't, but, you know, it was cool that they left it so open to interpretation that we had our own theories about it. Mm Mm-hmm. I like the character development. Yes. Of, like, Steve's character development was great. Mm Mm-hmm. And I like that they finally just pulled the trigger on Nancy and Jonathan. Because we knew that was going to happen. Yeah, it needed to happen. And, you know, one on a writer, I'm glad, you know, this is her, like, not second chance because she, you know, she's been around forever. But you know what I mean, like her chance to show that she still has it. Yeah, and know? she she shines through, yes. just like she did in the first one. Yes, I, I mean I don't think her performance is as strong as season one because season one was really focused on her mm-hmm. communicating with her son. So it was she was playing a different character. This one she has her son back, so she's trying to help him in any way she can versus this unknown thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest fan of the actor that plays Jonathan, but he just still does a good job. Uh, I think he is probably the most miscast person of the entire cast in a cast that is otherwise cast perfectly. How many times can I say the word cast? I like Hopper a lot. I just think he plays his role really well. Yes. Big fan <laughs> of David Harbour. And I mean, even the inclusion of new characters, uh, you know, Max and Angry Mullet, it seemed a little like you could have taken those characters out of the season and it wouldn't change the season whatsoever. Yeah, I think I think their backstory could have been better. I totally agree. That was one of the weaker things I was going to mention from this season. First they they dangled them the mystery carrot 
over our heads. Over many episodes. Like, they kept it really yeah. secret. Yeah. And then that mystery just turns out to be, it's just a shitty family. Yeah, yeah, with an abusive dad and a divorce. and Yeah, that's probably, that's probably one of the weaker, if not mm-hmm. the weakest plot line at all. Because, I mean, I get they were needed to give Steve a bit of something to battle against so he wasn't a cool guy. Yeah. Because this, this season, a subplot was really, like we said, um, Steve growing as a character. Uh-huh. So he, he needed that conflict. He lost his girlfriend. He lost his popularity. And he redeemed himself in the end. Mm-hmm. Even through all the loss. He still, like, persevered. Which, to go along with that character growth, I think one of the other things that also showed the character growth was he wasn't really ever upset about losing the popularity. No, yeah, yeah. It's like he knew, like, other things were more important. Yeah. I mean, after you live through yeah. the shit that they lived through. Yeah, definitely. How can you be upset about, <laughs> I'm not the team captain anymore? Yeah, yeah, good call. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, and that's, and that's another cool thing with the writing is that season one bled into season two. Yes. And it continued the evolution. So what we were seeing as an evolution in season two of Steve actually was born from season one. Mm-hmm. Which was pretty cool. I mean, his just evolution of his character was a highlight of the season for me. I mean, if anything, I mean, he's one of the characters that evolved the most. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, the kids, you can't really evolve them that much. Yeah. Just because of age and limitations. So you can ev- so they evolve them within the boundaries of, you know, what you could mm-hmm. do with the narrative. Nancy and Jonathan evolved just as that, just as a couple. Yeah. Not so much as their characters evolved. Right, exactly. So it was, as far as evolution of characters, well done. Mm-hmm. Um, the more I think about it, the more I think you are dead on with uh, Kali getting her own spinoff. Mm-hmm. Because she was in it for like one episode. Well, one one episode and part of one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. Which, as you said, as you pointed out, I, I didn't even notice it, but yeah, you pointed it out that that's like a sore thumb. Mm-hmm. It sticks out. Like, it was really the only episode that wasn't needed. Mm-hmm. So if people hated this episode, or hated episode seven the most, I could see why. Yep. Because ultimately, it was not needed. Other than Kali teaching L. Jane to harness her anger into power, it was completely useless. Mm-hmm. So it would be interesting, because now we can actually read stuff, read articles and watch videos on the season. So it would be interesting to see what other people thought of it as well, that particular yes. episode. So, yeah, I think you might have uh, going to be on something there with her having, having her own spinoff. Because otherwise she was absolutely pointless. Or a central, a central plot line for season three. upcoming seasons. Yeah, I thought that as well. Which would be cool. Because like, something, yes. something happens so big that they need to bring in new blood new power mm-hmm. the weakest thing i thought was and maybe maybe i missed it maybe i just didn't understand was where the gate was mm-hmm. we, we touched upon it in episode nine when l was closing it i didn't know that that was the fucking gate yeah because even when they went below the institute uh-huh. they focused so much on the tunnels and the graveyard area the inst- yeah with the we roses. never like we saw the big red line mm-hmm. behind them as they were lowering, but mm-hmm. no one even turned around and looked at it. Yeah, it was just like more like a, like a scar or something, you mm-hmm. know. And so I thought they were really vague. I thought they could have been a little clearer on that. In a season that is so well written, and and props to the Duffer brothers. But yeah, I mean, just to write these kind of characters and. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that they have the plot written out through all four seasons. Yes. That way we're not getting, like, hackneyed versions of... <laughs> I don't want to see, like, well, we need to, like, tack it on. One of my favorite TV series, it's older and it did not live up well to, t- uh, to the test of time, but mm-hmm. Babylon 5 okay. was five seasons. And before they even aired the first season, they had the entire five seasons written out. Oh, wow. So 
I think it's a much better way to do a series like that. Which is what I'm hoping they did with this. Yes. Because um, I do know the Duffer Brothers were originally slated. They, well, they wanted to remake uh, Stephen King's It. Mm -hmm. So if I recall correctly, they made this kind of as a, I don't want to say a fuck you, but hey, we are talented enough. Yeah. <laughs> Look what we can do. <laughs> And unlike the remake of it, in my opinion, the cast of Stranger Things is cast perfectly. Mm -hmm. Like, just, ah, uh, like, no one else could play Dustin. They picked, like, you know, Will to be this, like, innocent-looking, doe-eyed young kid. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike is cast perfectly. Uh, Eleven, Jane, is cast very perfectly. Winona Ryder. Always awesome. I mean, I wasn't that familiar with David Harbour's work. No. And now I'm like, okay, you are... You're an awesome, awesome actor. No, because I think it was after the first season, I was re-watching Suicide Squad. Yes. And yes. I spotted him in it. Yes, good call. That's right, he was in that. Another thing that I loved, mm -hmm. again, and something that they did so fantastic on the first season, the music. Yes. I mean, just their choice of songs and... Not even that, just also the score. And the fact that I, I touched upon it in episode nine review, like it stood out in other, in other episodes, but I didn't think to say it. Just how the songs not only were obviously 80s songs, but many of them had like uh, a meaning that could be woven into the scene they were playing during. Yes. Like I mentioned Runaway mm -hmm. playing when uh, L. Jane was with the misfit gang in Chicago and then of course at the end time after time of episode 9 and I'll be watching you mm -hmm. so totally agree and the score is fantastic yeah <laughs> yeah just bravo yeah again just, just I wrote I didn't say this because I was waiting to say it during the season 2 uh, wrap up picking the 80s for the backdrop was very smart mm -hmm. the way they use it is so well done yes like we aren't just having uh, close-up shots, you know, let's just make this diner look like the 80s. It's fucking, like, entire, like, the downtown Main Street area of Hawkins. They are, everything is, everything looks like the 80s. The only mistake I found, maybe, is in an earlier episode when Dustin is looking through binoculars and he sees a family video. And I was like, was family video around back in 1984? With that, hmm. cur with that current signage? It seemed like a really odd mistake if there, if it is one. If it's not, then never mind. Mm -hmm. But other than that, from the food to the clothing to the hairstyles to. I was going to say the hair. <laughs> just, it was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, like I said, the only two weak things to me were the uh, Angry Mullet Max backstory and what the hell was the gate? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was equally as strong to season one, mm -hmm. it told its own narrative. I'm glad the gang is all back together. Yes. And I look forward to season three. Another thing that they did so well that happened in so many of the episodes was splitting everybody off into different groups, mm -hmm. but still giving everyone equal time. Yes, we brought that up in a couple episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because not only did it really feel, I mean, other than episode seven, which was all L with Kali. They did a good job of, as you said, splitting everybody up and getting everyone equal time, but also the pacing yes. was really well done, especially in the last episode when they had all three things going on at once and all the cuts back to the different things were so well paced. Mm -hmm. Like the editing has always been on point, And I think episode nine really showed that off. So whoever does the editing, good job. Stranger Things knows exactly what the fuck it is. Yes. It knows not only knows what the, what its story is and know what, it knows where it needs to go. It knows what each character is, it's their motivations, how they should react. Mm -hmm. You know, just good god, it's just damn near the perfect show. Yes. I mean, other than kind of ripping off Elf and Lee, like I said, and those two minor nitpicks, it was just well done. I mean, I kept hearing online and social media and stuff that season two was just as good, if not better than season one. I'm like, eh, and yeah, I hope that they remain or they retain that consistency into seasons three and four. 
Yep. Agreed. And I cannot wait to purchase it when it comes out. Mm -hmm. So bravo, Duffer Brothers. You didn't get you didn't get it, but you made your own iconic series. Yeah. That everyone fucking loves. At the end of the day, it worked out better. Kind of do kind of wish that I could see what they would have done with it. Mm-hmm. Since they're so good at writing story and so good at writing characters that age. Mm-hmm. I, that, that's still that's that's a, that's a whole other discussion. But I think they really would have hit a home run with it as well. But anything else you'd like to add about season two? I know I'm probably forgetting something that I want to say. I always do. I guess one of the only other things that we're leaving that we're leaving out is the big bad for the entire overall season. Yeah, that was a little vague. I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. Like it's still really vague. I just, I don't know. I think it's just because they kept the gate so vague mm-hmm. and the motivation so vague. I just, I hope in season three, they, I mean, if not for the strong performances and overall strong writing, otherwise this might've been a miss, but it's not. Mm-hmm. I thought, yeah, the big bad could have been written way better. And if he's being, if Will is being violated for like five minutes straight by shadow monster, it needs to be just as big leaving him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was like smoke monster from lost. Yeah. So, no. But that's just a nitpick. You know, it's still a foreboding thing. It's maybe they want it to be an unknown going into season three for that reason. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I can respect that. You know, maybe we don't deserve all the answers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we still have one of the major mysteries that was probably one of the best things to come out of the filler episode is, is Matthew Modine's character. Still oh, alive. yeah, good call. I'm glad they didn't rush that. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm going to see. I knew there was stuff we were forgetting, which is a real big question mark. And if he is alive, yes. what the fuck is he doing? Mm-hmm. And if he is alive, we know for sure that L. Jane isn't safe. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a huge, that's like a sword of Damocles there. I mean, yeah, I'm very interested to see where they go with season three. Especially with the smoke monster, the smoke monster, the sh- uh, shadow monster following them. Mm-hmm. Like, it's almost like it, it left its imprint on Will and knows where he's at. That's how I take it to be. It'd be interesting to see what they do. All right. Anything else you would like to add? No. Just again, bravo to everyone. All right. Well, that wraps up the episode on season two of Stranger Things. And that wraps up season two of Stranger Things. I would like to commend my patience because I usually binge watch things in one night. I managed to spread this over three nights. So I'm going to pat myself on the back and yay me. And I appreciate (laughs) that too. (laughs) But other than being (laughs) self-congratulatory, thank you for listening. Tell us what you thought of season two of Stranger Things in the comments below. What did you think of the big bad and the backstory of Angry Mullet and Max and did you know that the gate was the gate or were you as clueless as we were? Cause they really didn't explain it. Let us know. Please like share and subscribe to the channel. So in the meantime, my name is Philip. And I'm TJ. And we will talk to you in the next video. Goodbye. Bye.